It is December 2022, and it is time to catch up on the latest in education. Hi, I'm Margaret Meek, and this is Bumps in Your Flight. news to start our monthly installment. The strike of teaching assistants, graduate researchers, and others in the University of California system may end. A tentative agreement has been reached. All that is left is a vote of the union membership. The deal includes pay raises, health care for dependents, and more extensive family leave. So why is this good news? Those who went on strike provided direct support for the education of UC system students. The return from the picket line will support education for UC students. As has dominated education news for the past six months, the President's Loan Forgiveness Plan is back in the news. This month, about 9 million award notification letters were mailed by a company contracted by the government to manage part of the forgiveness process. Much like the mistaken college acceptance letters we have discussed in the past, these forgiveness letters were a mistake. The notification means nothing. Award determinations will not be made until the Supreme Court decides on the legality of the program's creation authority. That decision will not be made until late spring of 2023. While 9 million received the award letter and 16 million received the correction email, there is still some misunderstanding of the status of loan repayments current status. Bottom line, loan repayment requirements have been postponed until the end of 2023. Once again, we suggest that if you owe money on your student loan, you either continue payments safe in the knowledge that loan forgiveness amounts you are awarded will be applied to your account, or you put those payments into a savings account and do not touch that money until you apply all of those funds to your account when payments are restarted. For those of you involved in the college search, we have two notices for you to pay attention to. First, Purdue University has started a process that NIST believes will grow. Purdue has created a list of student organizations that have faced discipline by the university. Parents kept contacting Purdue to collect information on student organizations their student was interested in joining. The parents didn't want to pay for or had their student's education or health challenged by joining a group with a history of misconduct. The staff found that creating and sharing the list of those groups that had gotten into trouble saved time and staff attention from the plethora of parent calls. Ness believes that having this information available along with the published safety record of each campus will be helpful to the college search process. Check with any college that interests you to see if they provide this type of organization list. Second, If you live in California and are challenged by the cost of college, the state has a program called Californians for All College Core. This program pays $10,000 toward in-state college tuition in return for 450 hours of volunteer work and approved jobs in K-12 education, climate action, or the program to reduce food insecurity. Currently, 6,600 students are receiving funding. But the budget for the program is $146 million. Administrative costs for this program seem very high, with at least $9 million listed as administrative costs. If you want to advocate for this style of program in your state, you might want to encourage lower administrative funding. A new report by Complete College America indicates that higher education is increasing graduation rates. The college completion rates grew from 2016 to 21 by 6%. This is true for colleges, university, community colleges, and leaves room for improvement, but the trend line is moving in the right direction. According to the same report, one area that needs a great deal of work is completion rate for Black and Latino students studying at community colleges. Fewer than 40% of these students earn their credentials in a six-year window. We have spoken in the past about colleges needing to address their financial models, especially regarding tuition. One school on the East Coast is making a large change to its tuition rate. Colby Sawyer College in New Hampshire is cutting its tuition from about $46,000 annually to $17,500. The staff reviewed how many students were paying full price and the amount being paid to students in scholarships and merit awards. The bottom line is that they decided that if they skipped the scholarships and merit awards, they could reduce tuition for all students. Some other colleges and universities are reducing their tuition costs, and Purdue University has not raised their tuition since 2012, while other schools are raising their tuition rates next fall. 
Some of those raising tuition are covering increased costs, and some are afraid that if they reduce their tuition rates, students will consider the school cut rate or less prestigious. And some colleges, such as Casanova College, a 200-year-old small liberal arts college in New York, are closing. Casanova cannot address its bond costs with the size of the student population they are attracting. They will not be open come fall 2023. We expect more colleges to announce closures. From Nesta Wings would like to remind all of you that an outstanding education at the college level is not tied to the cost of the school or the level of prestige the school seems to have. The school's pedigree should not be more important to your college selection than what the school has to offer you today. The most crucial measures of the value of your education are in the effort you put into your coursework, the experience you gain, and the ability you have to ask your instructors for assistance. Many of you have noticed that the landscape of college athletics has changed dramatically over the past two years. One of the two most significant components of the change includes the creation of the transfer portal, which allows students to change colleges at any point in their career as long as they have eligibility left. The portal is an official listing of those who are renouncing their past commitment and announcing their willingness to join a different college's program. This opportunity is available for all sports. The second is the NIL program or the Name, Image, and Likeness program. This allows student athletes across sports to be paid by entities outside the college and universities for their actual and potential performance in competition. There are many, many implications for schools, athletes, athletic program boosters, and coaches. A new study by Open Doors states that the average NIL take for quarterbacks of the Power Five conferences is $200,000 a year. Running backs are making around $130,000 a year. This funding comes on top of any tuition fees or room and board financing provided as scholarship to these athletes. These numbers are considered to be underrepresenting the funding available to star and marketable athletes. The new program and payments are growing dramatically as time passes. Name, image, and likeness funding is not equitable across sports or positions within the same sport. We want to give a shout out to the Alabama transfer University of Colorado offensive lineman Tommy Brown, who was able to turn his likeness and mullet into an underwear modeling contract with Shinesty. Tommy hustled to find a sponsor and receive payment for his modeling services. To those of you who are high school and college athletes, we remind you that you may have to work hard to receive outside funding. You also need to understand the processes being established in schools to help athletes manage this kind of financial success. Nest also reminds you that this income is taxable at the state and federal levels. For students who aren't athletes, you may well want to keep an eye on the level of funding from your tuition and fees to support collegiate sports. While it is true that competition and reputation can add a great deal to the college experience of all students, payments to the athletic department can significantly impact your tuition and fees. In the challenging news of the month, the Taliban has canceled all university education for women in Afghanistan. Following other edicts, women and girls will not receive education past the elementary level. It is hard to see how keeping 50% of a country's population from education will enhance society. Our best wishes go out to those women who pursue informal education in an attempt for self-development. You go, girls. And there is a story about a Chinese student spying on their fellow Chinese students in the U.S. and providing harmful information back to the Republic's government. This particular case happened at the Berkeley School of Music in Massachusetts. To quote the FBI, Today the FBI arrested Ziolai Wu for repeatedly threatening and infringing on the rights of a civic activist who spoke out against the ruling Communist Party of China. We believe Mr. Wu stalked, harassed, and reported the victim's support for democracy to law enforcement in the People's Republic of China so it would launch an investigation into the victim and her family. This alleged conduct is alarming and goes completely against our country's democratic values, said Joseph R. Bonavallada special agent in charge of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, Boston Division. Being a student in the United States affords protections for challenging statements a student makes against their home government. Sometimes we all take our freedoms for granted. Freedoms such as pursuing education no matter who we are and speaking against government action without life-threatening repercussions. 
Finally, our congratulations for the month go to Charlie Munger. On January 1st, Mr. Munger will turn 99 years old. In 1948, Mr. Munger graduated from Harvard Law without first earning an undergraduate degree. Good job, Charlie Munger, graduating from law school and living a long life. Keep working on your college applications, college completion plans, and your personal skills. All of these are great New Year's resolutions. If you found any of this information useful, hit the like button or consider subscribing. And if you have any questions, let us know in the comments below. We would love to hear what you are thinking.